I'm Stefan Bauman. I would like to invite you on a special journey to discover the splendor, encounter the grandeur, feel the excitement. Come along with me as we experience the thrill of painting outdoors. A three-day journey that will change your art forever. In one of America's most stunning locations, Mount Shasta. Everything you need to know is on our website, www.stephanbauman.com. And then one of the things that you guys should have is a color checker. Because you can't trust your eyes. So these color checkers you can buy there at Geneva Art. They're kind of expensive, but you kind of can't. Now, some people have said, oh, I've got my own homemade one, and I don't know. You know, the thing is, Carter. You know, he spent, he, this is a lot of evolution here, too. But the thing is, this, when we're painting a blue sky, and we're putting a blue sky in, we have a hard time believing, is that blue the right blue that I should use? So what a color checker does is that you mix the color that you think it is, and you put it on this little plate right there. So you see the little plate here? And then you hold it up to your eye, and you hold that plate. And the plate's this way because it gets light, the same light that's in the, in the sky falls on there. And you can test that color that's on the plate to the sky back there. Now, there are a lot of artists that are out there, and there are a lot of artists that, you know, say, well, I can make one of those. It's like, why? First thing, Carter makes these, and he's gone through several evolutions of it, right? And what's awesome about it is a couple of things. One, he has got it down to a science, the angle and, and the look. It's spray-painted black, so the outside of this has nothing to do with the color that you actually see. It's designed to be comfortable in your hand, and this should actually be worn on a string around your neck. And while I was out there with you guys, you guys were doing really good with color, but if you had a problem with color, I would have sat there and said, here, try this. And ultimately, when I loan it out, uh, some of my things, I never get them back. So I was like, no, you, you, you can use it for while I'm here, but I have to have it back. But it should be around your string, because it's a hard time figuring out what color is that. So you match and look at it, and the thing is, he's got it down, and he's got so much money in, in the technology of it, and it's, and it's a sturdy thing. It's, it's actually beautiful to hold on to. It's like a piece of furniture. It's really nice. You can make them with cardboard and all this stuff, but it's, you know. The thing is, this is a tool. And, and yeah, you can go play golf. You can go play golf and get one of those mini golf pucks that they have in mini golf. And you could stand at the green, I'm sure, and you can swing it just like a regular golf club, and it would hit the ball as a regular golf club would. But how good is it? I have people that go, oh, because I talked to the proportional divider, and they go, well, it's just two sticks, I'll make one, or I'll take some chopsticks and make it. And I go, yeah, go ahead and do that. First thing, they have a hard time getting the point to it. And if those points are not perfect, it's not going to work. And then to get all of the relationships, I mean, for a $7 item, you're going to go and spend $15 at the hardware store in a whole day to try to figure out how to make it? Buy them. Don't be so cheap. Buy it. You know, you need it. And so a color checker is great. So when you're working on the sky, you mix that color that you want it to be right away, check it, and look at it. Okay?
Next up. Uh, last question for me is when, do, when does it make sense for us to just scrape the painting off this time? Because there are some times where it's just not, not happening. Just stop. Stop the insanity. Quit going down there. But the thing is, run through my 12 steps. Um, if your painting's not working, don't be upset at yourself. Pretty much go as much as you can because chances are you won't have enough time to do anything else. And you have to fill up a whole garage full of crap before you can actually call yourself a professional artist. You've got to go through all that process. And a shitty painting is teaching you what not to do. You might as well just follow it through and just produce a shitty painting and say, next time I know. Don't, don't let go of it too early. Because sometimes a shitty painting is just in its monster stages. Or maybe you're not the best critic of your own, but it's good to just leave it alone. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you'll produce a really shitty painting, and it's the first thing that sells at a show. Yep. And you go, yeah. uh -huh. I wasn't even going to use that one, and it won an award. It's like, but it's always a learning possibility. So say, oh, this is kind of interesting. It's not turning out, but let's just see what else... I can do with it. So it's an opportunity to learn something new or break out of your zone and find something new. Oftentimes a shitty painting is just a breakthrough to a new level. And you will always produce shitty paintings because you, your level of painting is here and your thought process is up here somewhere and your brain will never match what you want the painting to be. And, and then you have ego that, that jumps in and it starts to sabotage your painting. You start sabotaging your painting because it's not good enough. And yet, chances are, the painting that you think is shitty, if I showed it to you last year, you would have said, wow, if I could have just painted that, I would be happy. But now your sights are so high up that you'll always fall short and you have to be comfortable with it. You'll never reach that pinnacle. Unfortunately, that, that pinnacle, that feeling of, of satisfaction, ends with your second painting. Because once you get your second painting and man, you start going to the hemisphere of all these artists that are so much better than you, and you compare yourself with them, everything you do is shitty. So be comfortable with that, it's good. And things that are really shitty are in the garage, and every artist that's out there that you admire is an imposter anyway, because they're not showing you the crap that's in their garage. And they have a whole garage full of crap that they never will show you, but they'll never admit to it. And you think they're God, but they're just like you. So produce a lot of shitty paintings, and maybe a couple of them will end up in a museum somewhere. And this is kind of a huge question, but when I look at your paintings, they're extremely harmonious. I mean, the colors just work together. And I struggle with that so much with my stuff. And I'm just wondering if this, are you using more of like an analogist? No, 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 I don't get that. But see, that's a problem when you, when you, mm, Everything is created out of red, yellow, and blue. And if you stand in front of the mountain and it's a, it's a gray day and you paint what you see, your painting is going to be harmonious because nature is harmonious. Right, but so often with time, I look at what I've done and the colors just don't work. Well, that's because you weren't painting what was out there. You didn't take your color checker out there because you haven't bought one yet. And you think you could make one, right? But don't. Give him his money. He paid for it. It's well, like, I also watched his video on how to make it myself. I don't. You should be painting. Don't waste your time. Stefan doesn't use that many colors. Yeah, and the thing is... It's super limited. It's super limited, but the thing is, the thing is, though, if you paint what you see, nature shows up harmonious. If it doesn't show up harmonious on your paintings because you got a color wrong. Everything is going to be, you know... And basically, everything's made up of red, yellow, and blue. It's really easy to paint... Uh, and mix colors because all what you have to do to mix colors you have to ask yourself five questions does this color that I'm mixing need more blue and you have to ask these questions separately does it need more yellow does it need more red does it need more black does it need more white if you ask yourself those questions independently and answer them you could paint every color chip there is at Home Depot I guess it's practice then because I've done that yeah and when something's out of, out of harmony, fix it. Yeah. Well, All my stuff's out of harmony. Yeah. The painting you painted yesterday wasn't out of harmony. Right. And the thing is, sometimes if you want to create wow in a painting, you don't want the harmony. You might want a harmony background, but that center focal point shouldn't be in harmony. 
because the light, when the light comes into your painting, it disrupts everything. It's a, it's a freight train. Yeah, but when you look at your highlight, like on the moves this form, mm -hmm. it works with everything else. It's not out of harmony. Well, because I use the same color highlight on here as the same color that's on here and here, because all I use for a highlight is yellow and white. Right. That yellow is cool. Yesterday, though, it was so different than everything else in the scene. Mm -hmm. It really stood out. But that's what does, that's what happens when you turn light. It's, if you notice, it's kind of a gray, boring day, and then all of a sudden the light comes and goes, pink, and that... That light isn't harmonious to all that gray that you were seeing. It's a different thing. The background still say gray, foreground still say gray, but that thing that came in was a freight train with a headlight on it and went. Mah. What I mean is, well, see, you've tried you've tried limited palettes without temperature. Yeah, the temperature changes everything. When you understand the temperature conversation, then it, that's why I, I'm just really surprised when, when you listen to, uh, and some of the people, and like Lisa, goes to the convention, and she'll come out of it, and she'll go, well, they didn't talk about temperature. And it's like, you almost want to walk out of the demo. And, and he, she was watching uh, the first year she went to the convention. She said, I went in to run up to stage and tell the demonstrator what to use to make the painting pop because he wasn't getting to it, you know? And she was like, oh, he was driving me crazy. I wanted to take his brushes, <laughs> you know? It's I'm because sure you know it, that. huh? I'm sure he would have loved that. Yeah, but remember, and you were watching, and he was a prom, he's like one of he the- He's really prominent. He's really up there. And she's like watching that demo going, mm. It was hard sitting here. Yeah, I know. From no, the you don't. Value. And all of you are going to go on YouTube looking for it, and there's not very much out there either. And when they do, it's just fun. Um, the, the thing, the reason why it's important to go and do planar sketches is so that it gives you information about that painting. But you don't want to um, rely on the painting and blow it up. You want, to, you want to use the painting as a source. You always want to be challenging your own ideas and thoughts. And if you... If you do nothing more than take a, do a sketch as a planar painter, and that's why I tell you you shouldn't do sketches when you go out to paint because they won't really lead up to anything. Because once you kind of do a sketch and you start doing it big, you'll get bored with it because there's no surprises. So what you want to do is you want to look at your new painting that's in the studio to have it be inspired by the sketch. And, and at that point, what you want to do is have that sketch remind you of being out there because when you look at your sketches, like when I look at that painting there, it brings me right back to the bottom of the canyon. And when I close my eyes looking at that and transform to the bottom of the canyon, I can actually feel myself looking up trying to get the perspectives and the colors. And sometimes, you know, it's like if you ever go into a cafeteria and you walk in and you go, oh my God, this reminds me of third grade. You know, or some certain smells remind you of certain things. The sketch is just there to trigger things that you didn't even see or remember. You know, there's a lot of subliminal things that the brain was absorbing and you don't remember it because you were busy doing your sketch. And oftentimes if you don't copy your sketch, you use it as an inspiration and you allow the painting to be, your subconscious mind will start saying, hey, you didn't see this, but this was also cool. And then you want to bring in more of what you know that you may have missed into your sketch but to duplicate a sketch in the studio from your sketch and redo it is boring because you know how it's going to turn out. It's just a bigger version. And people go, uh-uh, it's bigger, it's different. It's like, no, it's not. You'll see. And three weeks into it, because a studio painting takes you so much longer, three weeks into it, you're like going, ah, can't wait to get this done because there's no surprise. You know, we want to we wanna make everything new and fresh. And so a little painting done on location it's just perfect as a little painting done on voc uh, location. It just doesn't need to be redone. The world doesn't need. Some of my best paintings are these little tiny intimate corners. My, one of my favorite paintings in the entire world is a Fragnar painting at the Legion of Honor. And it's this big. <laughs> and it's one of my favorite paintings. And it's everything you possibly want. It wouldn't translate to anything else. And it's two girls having a pillow fight in front of an open window. 
You've seen that painting. But as soon as I tell you, you like immediately see it, right? And it's like it's a fabulous little tiny painting that, you know, people have seen it, they remember it. If you'd like to try coaching for yourself, whether you're a beginner or an advanced painter, please don't hesitate to give me a call at 415-606-9074. Join us on our website at www.thegrandview.org and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting.